Studying more effectively for the FE exam will ensure success. In this week's Pass the FE exam video, I have with me Alejandro Patino, Senior Engineer at Collier's Engineering and Design. And Alejandro is gonna give you some tips on how he prepared and studied and passed the FE exam with two months of focused study time. He's gonna lay out his plan for you. This week's video is brought to you from our sponsor, PPI, a leader in engineering exam prep for the FE and PE exams since 1975. PPI provides expert prep courses and study resources designed to help you pass the FE exam the first time. PPI's live online courses include hours of lectures, problem solving demonstrations, exam strategy sessions, office hours, and a passing guarantee. When you take a live online course, PPI guarantees you will pass or you can take the on-demand course for free. With study guides, practice exams, and more, the PPI Learning Hub offers digital practice and review that you can take with you anywhere you have a device so that you can prepare during the times most convenient for you. Check out PPI today at ppi2pass.com to see all the options available for FE exam prep. Let's dive in. All right, now I'd like to welcome our guest for today, Alejandro Patino, Senior Engineer at Collier's Engineering and Design. Alejandro, welcome to pass the FE exam. Thank you. Thank you. Very thrilled to be here today. So Alejandro, tell our viewers a little bit more about kind of your educational background and the field of engineering that you practice. Sure. So I went to a community college for two years, Southwest County. Um, just to get the basic classes out of the way. And then I went to NGIT for two years where I got my bachelor's in civil engineering. I'm currently working for Collier's Engineering and Design where I'm a senior engineer and I work under the municipal team. Uh, we do a lot of roadway design, park, parks design, drainage systems, uh, mains, uh, all sorts of that stuff, uh, and, but I'm currently more focused on the roadway design. Okay, that's great. And I like the, uh, the two-year community college route. Personally, I think it's a great route. I think it's a financially, you know, savvy Absolutely. route to take for sure. I mean, you know, getting two years in at the community college, getting a good foundation in. So yeah, Alejandro, absolutely. talk to us about kind of your first tip around creating an exam study schedule. Talk about the schedule, the importance of it. So right off the bat, I mean, if you look at this exam, it, it has a lot of information, has a lot of subjects. And I think that in order for you to succeed, uh, or at least to have a bigger chance of succeeding in this exam, you need a schedule um, to make sure you hit every subject that is laid out uh, in the NCES website for the exam specifications. Um, so I think that having a good understanding of what your schedule is like, you know, if you have a nine to five job or, or if you're, you know, taking some classes uh, and then just understanding how much time you can dedicate every day to, you know, to study for the exam. It's very important uh, for a person like me. Uh, I you know, did the calculations, you know, took a broader look, broader look and determined that two months was probably uh, the range of time that I needed to study for this exam. Um, you know, like about like three to four days per subject. And I think that helped me out just laying that out and setting yourself with some goals and some milestones that you can hit because it's a lot of subjects. You, you want to make sure you cover all of them before you're, you know, sitting to take the exam. Yeah, it's a great point, right? Taking a look at the big picture, look at that exam. You can get the specifications for the exam on the NCWS website, and you can kind of lay out all the different topics and figure out how much time you're going to need. Alejandro figured out about two months for himself. You know, everyone's different, of course. And, you know, the next thing I want to ask Alejandro about, of course, is his study process, which I'm going to ask him to go through. And I do think that your study process, of course, is going to inform your schedule as well. So Alejandro, talk a little bit about your process for preparing for the exam. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I 
thought that I could uh, kind of study on my own, like kind of create my own process. So I'll tell you like what worked out for me. Um, so I made sure, obviously I scheduled, you know, some time for every subject. I did it in the same order that the website lays it out. Um, so what I did was that I actually found uh, some videos on YouTube from Marshall's University. Um, and they actually have some great lectures on each subject. So what I did is that I allocated some time to watch the lectures, take some notes. And then uh, after each lecture, I went to, uh, I bought this book, FE Civil Practice. Um, it's by Michael R. Lindbergh. It's from PPI, I believe. Um, and I did the practice problems for every subject. So I did the lecture and then all the problems for every section. And then right at the end, when I was done with every subject, um, I, took, I took two practice exams, which I purchased from the NCES website. Uh, I had two of them and I just took them as if I was there that, you know, the, the day of the exam. And that's what worked out for me, actually. That's great. And yeah, PPI, they're, they're one of our big content sponsors. I use their resources as well. They have, they have courses live and on demand. They also have great books as Alejandro showed you one of them there. And I think the important thing here to note is that everybody's different in terms of their preparation preferences. And, you know, Alejandro was able to do it on his own. He sketched out a study schedule. He dedicated himself to a certain amount of time for each of the topics. And, and he got a couple of practice exams. We actually interviewed one of Alejandro's colleagues just a couple of weeks ago, about a month or so ago on the channel here, Chris Sivchek. And Chris was kind of the opposite. He felt that he really needed a PE review course or an FE review course and live ones. We needed live instructors to help him do it. He just, he wasn't able to do it on his own. And so everyone's different. So part of this process is understanding how you prepare best, how you study best. And really at the end of the day, if you try something and if you don't pass this exam, you can try something different. And that's exactly what happened to Chris. He tried the self-study like Alejandro it didn't work out for him. So he ended up having to go to the live course and that did work out for him. You know, it's like any engineering problem, right? There's different solutions. You have to kind of pick the one that's best for you. So Alejandro, let's talk a little bit about solving practice problems. That's critical for epi exam preparation. It's really, really important. What advice can you share with our viewers about practice problems? Oh man, if you're going to listen to one tip, this is the one to listen to. <laughs> uh, this is definitely the most helpful thing that I did in you know, my whole study process. And it's when doing the exam problems, the practice problems, I tried to replicate you know, the exam environment. I felt like that was just the most critical thing because... One, a lot of the problems can be solved without knowing anything about them and using the FE reference handbook. You know, just knowing your FE reference handbook, like up and down, it's going to be vital, you know, especially since uh, you can use, you know, we're, used, we're taking the exam on a computer. Um, you can do control, control F and that's vital. Uh, I, so every time that I try to uh, solve problems, practice problems, I had the FV reference handbook opened and I try to not look at the answer right away. If I didn't get it, I try to search. I try to replicate that same environment of the day of the exam. So that's kind of like preparing yourself for what you're going to, you know, go through that actual day of the exam. So I practice every practice exam i think every practice problem you should definitely look at the fe reference handbook and just do as many of them as you can because yeah, i that's, think that's what's going to help you the most yeah that's great advice and you know we had a engineer uh, his name was mason mallard who came on our past the pe exam channel and he's actually he's was a professional baseball player he was a minor leaguer and 
didn't work out for him. So he decided to pursue his engineering career. And what he said to us, which was very interesting, was it's not so much about whether or not you can get the problems right. It's about whether or not you can get them right during the exam when you're in a timed pressure filled situation, which he really equated to sports. You know, if you could be the greatest baseball player in practice, right. But when you get on the field and when it counts, it's a whole different ball game. So, you know, to Alejandro's point, you need to kind of replicate the situation as best as possible. And I would imagine also Alejandro, that means you need to time yourself when you do these problems. Absolutely. And just to add on just uh, to that tip, I just, you know, there is just like once you start getting your head around all these problems that you're going to do, you know, for practice, you're going to realize that there is just so many different types of problems that it's honestly impossible to remember every single type of problem. And, you know, once you see an exam, be like, oh, yeah, I know how to do this. You know, this is the process. So just looking at some of these problems that honestly, I don't even remember solving during school. Uh it was like surprising. I was like, what is this? You know? So, you know, throughout time, I kind of learned to relax, take a deep breath, look at it. If I haven't seen it ever, first thing you do is you go to your reverend hand, uh, handbook, you look up keywords and then, you know, you can find formulas. I mean, I think that that was one of the biggest problems that I had when I took it for the first time. i freaked out looking at some of these problems i'm like i've never seen anything like this or maybe if i had i've completely forgotten about it and just blanked out when you know if you keep yourself calm and you look up some of this stuff in the handbook you're going to see that you're going to be able to find stuff that will help you you know this questions or information in the handbook because the handbook is full of information that it's just made for that to solve the exam so i think that just knowing your handbook, like it's critical. So Alejandro, when did you take the exam in relation to when you graduated school? So I graduated in 2020 and I believe I took it in 2019 uh, during my senior year. Uh, I took the exam kind of like, oh, I will just take it. I'll be fine. You know, I'm kind of already preparing for it by, you know, going to school and I'll be fine. And I looked at the reference handbook like the day before I was like, I'll, I'll you know, I'll, I'll do fine. Cause I was a good student. So, you know, once I saw the exam for the first time, it was an eye opener for sure with everything. I struggle with time. I struggle with the questions. I think it was just that, you know, that's where I got my idea from replicating that exam environment because i think that what i saw that day made me blank and i just I, most of the exam i was like freaking out I'm like i what is this <laughs> so you then passed it on the second time around is that right correct yes okay. correct all right so still that being said i mean Alejandro did prepare in two months, which I think is a reasonable amount of time. I mean, it didn't, that's not a lot of time taken out of kind of your life to be able to do something like this. So I think that that's promising. And listen, it's a decision you have to make. I mean, I tell people to take the exam as close as you can to schooling because there are a lot of the concepts in there. You just learn them. But at the same time, you know, taking it during an engineering curriculum can also be complicated. And if you can't find the yeah. time to study, maybe for you, it is beneficial to wait a few months till after graduation to take it. So, you know, you have to balance that out, but I think that, you know, it's really, again, personal preference, but, you know, regardless of however you do it, you do not want to get too far out of school when you're taking this exam. I think that that's really important to remember. So Alejandro, do you have a final tip that you'd like to share with the listeners? Yes, absolutely. So last thing is take as many practice exams as you can, you know, once you've, I think that I incorporated that into my schedule. I said, I want to take some days to take the exam literally as if I was there in that room. So, you know, close myself in a room, open the handbook, have my uh, open the exam, have the handbook right on my computer screen and take it as if I was there timing myself, which was the, you know, other important thing, just, 
taking at least two or three exams, I think that it's very important because you can, you can actually, you know, replicate that environment. And the day that you take it, you won't feel as surprised or, you know, as stressed out about it. You're like, okay, I've, I've done this before. So, so that's my final tip. Yeah. And again, that's, that's great advice because, you know, you could be sitting on your couch, cranking out a problem, spending 15, 20 minutes on it, sitting at your kitchen table, doing another two or three problems, but it's not the same as when you're sitting at the table in the exam and it's one after the next and their time, and you got to average X minutes per each question and things of that nature. So you really need to pull it all together and do your prep under those conditions, especially as you get closer to the exam and you have a few weeks to go, you really want to ramp up kind of those exam like conditions and doing practice exams like Alejandro recommended. So Alejandro Patino, the senior engineer with Collier's Engineering and Design, thank you so much for spending some time with us here on Pass the FE Exam. I appreciate you having me. All right, I hope you found this week's video helpful. In upcoming videos, I'll answer more of your FE exam questions and run through more practice problems. Pass the FE exam will publish videos weekly, so please be sure to click the subscribe button as you'll get expert tips and tricks, including practice problem solutions weekly to ensure you pass the FE exam. We'll see you next week on Pass the FE Exam.